Now that we analyzed the relation between natural resources and the economic system, and so that there are ways we can still aspire for a sustainable development even when no renewable resources are used to produce goods in the economy. Are we now in a situation to define which should be the best way to use these resources? In other way, are we ready to answer the question which should be the optimal natural resource extraction and level of consumption? Well, not quite yet, as we first need to define our ethic basic. And uh, why should we consider ethic? Well, the question, what will happen to petrol consumption if the tax on it increase by X percent? This is a question for positive economics. It doesn't entail any ethic consideration. We can answer this kind of question with just our inductive uh, reasoning to extract data out of our observation of the world and then with a deductive analysis we can answer this kind of question. However, this second kind of question, should the tax on petrol be increased or which should be the optimal natural resource extraction and level of consumption, this kind of question is deeply different because these questions are for normative or welfare economics. And to answer this kind of question, we cannot do it without using some ethical criteria that define what is right and what is wrong. And uh, much of environmental and resource economics is about questions of this should type. And so we can distinguish between uh, positive economics that simply respond to which are the consequences of doing something versus normative economics, where instead we really suggest as economists what sh should be done. Most uh, economists to answer uh, normative kind of uh, uh, questions use as their ethic base what is called utilitarianism. Utilitarianism has been proposed as an ethic framework by John Stuart Mill uh, at the end of the 18th centuries. Uh, John Stuart Mill is not the person that started discussion on, uh, on this topic, but is the, pers the author that put all the previous concepts the pieces of the different uh, thought uh, together in uh, what is this book Utilitarianism that is the most complete expression of utilitarianism ethic and so it is somehow credited as to make uh, utilitarianism uh, wide uh, through the, the history of economic uh, uh, thought. So utilitarianism is an ethic rule for which Whatever increases welfare is right. So what is welfare? Welfare is some sort of uh, aggregation of individual utilities that in turn are uh, individual pleasure or happiness. So, so to sum it up, on one side we have the concept of utility, that is the individual levels of pleasure or happiness. And on the other hand, we have the concept of welfare, where uh, here we have the social good. And for utilitarianism ethic, it's some sort of aggregation of the individual utilities. We'll see that we can aggregate in different way. So for uh, as a ethic rule for utilitarianism, every actions that increase welfare is a good action and every action that decreases welfare is a bad action. Some notes. Well, first actions are judged only on the basis of their implication for the utilities and hence on welfare. So it uses a consequentialist theory of moral philosophy. 
only consequence matters, not their motivations. So in other ways, Machiavelli would say the ends might justify the means. We live in a world where this is true, but uh, not, again, not completely. If um, I kill someone intentionally, this is considered to be more uh, worse than if I kill someone because of a car incident. We always live in somewhere in the middle, but in uh, strict terms, utilitarianism is uh, for utilitarianism only the consequences of an action are those that matter. Further, in particular, the version of utilitarianism that is used by economists, it is called preference satisfaction utilitarianism. Who decide what increase welfare and what not? Who in- decide who increase utility or decrease? And uh, for uh, preference satisfaction utilitarianist, it is the person itself, the person affected, that they decide. Each individual person has somehow its own rule, or uh, more formally, its utility functions that we can express in terms of preferences and is the sole judge of how much utility different options may confer to, to him. And uh, this could be not the only way to define uh, utilitarianism. For example, one could instead identify utility with uh, physical or mental health rather than uh, preference satisfaction, preference of the person involved. And this would lead to very different outcomes, like in smoking policies we may define. And again, in the real world, we are uh, never going uh, to the extremes, we are always somewhere in the middle. In the real world, we have a smoking policies because we think that you have the right to do what you want, but you may not know what is good and what is uh, not good for you. And this is a sort of critics of informational basic critics to um, preference satisfaction. But preference satisfaction utilitarianism assume that you know exactly what is good and what is wrong for you and this is not always something uh, reasonable to to assume how do we move from utility to welfare that is how do we aggregate the utility of the different functions so for an individual uh, utility functions is a function that map state of the world and we represent the state of the world as individual consumption of bundles of various goods and services into a single number for utility. So this is a function that depends on the consumption of the first kind of good, the second kind of good and all the different possible kind of goods. and map these quantities to one single number for that person. And again, each person has a different utility function. Uh, We will work in uh, this course to utility functions where uh, the arguments are just the own level of consumption. So this is consumption. So if this is for individual uh, number one, this is individual number one, utility on the individual number one, this is the consumption of of the first item of individual number one. This is the consumption of the second item, but again for individual number one. And this is consumption of the end Uh, good but for individual number one but we may also assume that people are uh, the utility functions are uh, functions also the consumption of the other people we are uh, somehow altruistic overall but uh, we in these lessons we will assume that the utility depends only on uh, the own levels of consumption 
And two important assumptions also that we make is that utility functions are uh, increasing and concave. So the first derivative, and when I put the symbol like this, I normally in, intend that this is the derivative of the utility with respect to, to x, uh, the variable x that is in this case the consumptions, is uh, higher than zero, but the second derivative is negative. So the utility functions as a shape like this. Why we do that? Because we assume that um, uh, more item you consume, uh, more your utility increase, but as you say, if you consume uh, 10 cans of beer is better than five, but 20, okay, is still better, but 30, the, the increment in your utility is uh, marginally decreasing. So given the utility, the rule of the social welfare functions is those to treat utility functions as if they were cardinal and aggregate over them in order to produce a single measure of uh, welfare. What do we mean uh, to treat them as cardinal? Because actually utility functions are ordinal measures. They give you only Given different sets of uh, goods consumed, you can say, I prefer this one or I prefer this one, but you cannot say how much you prefer this one to this other. So think about street numbers in a road. You may have uh, here, you may have the number one. So if this is the road, you may have number one. And then after a while, you may have number three. And then after a little bit, you may have number five. So the distance between five and three doesn't tell you anything about how it compares with the distance between three and one. You can only say that five is more on the right than, than three. And the same is for uh, utility. You can compare different, b different sets of uh, consumer uh, goods and you can say I prefer this one to this other but you cannot say how much you prefer it compared to another set but in welfare economics we treat utility functions as if they were cardinal and we move on aggregating finding some kind of functions that aggregate the utility of the person A, the utility of the person B and so on in one single measure of welfare for the society. And again we make some assumptions that the, in relation with the utility of every person the, the, the welfare increase. So whatever we increase the utility of some member of the society, the welfare also increase. As we are following utilitarianism ethic, our objective is hence those to maximize the welfare of the society. And uh, we'll start this task from a very, very simple uh, single period uh, model. So we are having a lot of assumptions. The first one is we have only two individuals and only one good. So that the utility of each person depend of, on their consumption of this single good. And the welfare is an aggregation of uh, the utility of these two guys, A and B. And finally, so our the quantity available of this good is given by what is consumed by the gay guy number A and what is consumed by the guy number B. And we have only one time period. Given that, what we want to do is we want maximize the welfare that is a function of utility, that is a function of, uh, of consumption of the two guys changing the level 
of consumption of the two gays, guy. So, which is the consumption level of guy number A and guy number B, such that the welfare is maximized. And all this subject to the fact that we have these constraints to respect. So, this is what is called a constrained optimization uh, problem, and we have a, a equality constraints. And uh, we can solve this kind of problem with the Lagrangian multiplier method that we are going to, to explain in a few slides. So uh, if you already know uh, the Lagrangian multipliers, you can skip the following segment. <laughs>